Good morning, saints. Welcome to our service today at Spirit Word Ministries on this glorious day in August the 7th, 2022. We're going to be doing part 14 of our series, Healing is the Children's Bread. You may want to get a verse together, Matthew 28, 18 will be there. <clears throat> Just for your reference, before we start today, we're going to be doing the last page on your angelic miracles, page 3. And then we're going to start right in on... Um, um, more on your angels, part two, and then right after that, Holy Ghost healing. So get your mind on the Lord this morning. See the Lord Jesus Christ standing before you with his arms outstretched. You know, put your arms outstretched to him. You know, this is a romance that we have with the Master, with the Savior, the Creator of all things. So see yourself deep into his arms and his arms into, around you. Yes, just let go of all the cares of this world, all the concerns, all the stresses, all the worries. He's got it all figured out. He's already defeated it all and set it to your account, so there's nothing to be concerned about. There's nothing for you to be worried about at all. Just receive his peace. <clears throat> receive that eternal life flooding through you, that everlasting life. And let that immortality strengthen you. Realize who you are and what you are. Hallelujah. Drink in the presence of the Holy Spirit. He's within you. He abides upon you. Let him strengthen you. Let him prepare you to receive a, a good and great word today. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah to the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah to the Father, the precious Lord Jesus Christ. Glory, glory, glory. Guru to si sama krasti sasana kriti sana kro rata sana krata sasa papakastana kritiya. My beloved children, know this and understand this carefully in these days and these times, especially these times which are very short, where the things as you see, as you know them today, will be changed, they'll be inverted, there'll be a reversal of all things as you know it to, to be. For I am replacing all things with the kingdom of God, and I've prophesied it through this ministry for many years, but the time is at hand where the birthing of this thing will be manifest. It'll be before you very shortly, and there'll be an inversion of all things, not only in the political arena, but also in the religious, but also in the economic system of this world system. For I'm changing all things, yes, because I have to bring into harmony a restitution of all things and conformity to what my word said to my people, through all the scriptures and through all the major and minor prophets in the Bible. Yes, and I told you in the beginning that you, in Genesis 1:26, 7 and 8, that you had dominion over all the earth, and everything has to come back into harmony, even to that verse. And as you see things today, the wicked, yes, they have the wealth of this world system. But I have to bring everything back into the conformity to my precious word, for my word is perfect. And through the redemption of my son's death, burial, and resurrection, that great DVR know that I've already caused the wealth transfer to be transpired. For I've already seen it. I've already seen it done. I've already seen it accomplished. Yea, because I'm the God who inhabits eternity, and I have foreknowledge of all things. And I've seen this church, this today, this body of Christ, that's in existence in the year 2022. Yea, the great wealth transfer that will start coming into your hands in a mighty and, oh, an explosive way. For it's going to change everybody's lifestyle and their priorities. But you must be settled and deep in, with me, because if you don't know me and my ways and what you're to use that money for, I know those finances for. The enemy will get into you. Yes, he'll get inside of your, yes, into your mindset and to have you squander it. But you're, you're to understand this. Yes, there's an apportionment of that that I want you to have. For you need to bring great relief unto yourself so that you can minister unto the gospel in these last hours of time. So that you can support the gospel in these last hours of time through many ways and many vehicles and many venues. Yes, and jurisdictions will be held high and mighty, for I'm going to have my people take over many of the TV stations and many of the broadcasting networks. I'm going to have my people take over many of the radio broadcasts and airwaves. And my people will saturate the printed word, yes, out there, where these are the times of the gospel getting preached to the ends of the earth, so that every man, woman, and child will have an opportunity to receive my, yes, my son, my, the great savior of the universe. Jesus Christ himself, through his blood cleansing, through his blood washing, to receive that great eternal life to flood through them, yes, 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 and even unto the children in this next generation. 
Yes, and my people will receive my righteousness through my Son, the righteousness of God in themselves. And yes, and no man will pluck you out of my hands or my son's hand. And the Holy Ghost has sealed you. And I've given you my supernatural peace and my assurance that these are the days, these are the times, that every one of you will have an anointing, and do have that anointing already dwelt within you to minister my word of reconciliation to all people, <clears throat> to all men and women, especially those in the world system that need to be drawn unto my glory and to my body and to my Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, my son, my beloved, and you're one with him, so you're my beloved inside of him. And know that you've been called to this time, this place, for these events, and that you've called in to be a minister of finance in these last days. Yes, you do. Yes, you will. And I'm going to shake the money out of the hands of the wicked rich. And I'm going to shake it, yes, in a great way. And they're not going to be, they're going to be left destitute unless they become born again. And they get their minds quickly renewed to the word of God and to how and why I want them to use this money. And yes, and they're going to use it in a great way. And I'm going to use it in an explosive way because I'm going to give my people an uncommon wisdom, a knowledge. So that they can go forth in demonstration with this understanding of what to use these resources for. For there is power in money, and I told you in my, my word in Ecclesiastes, that all things, yea, all things are governed by the power of the wealth of this, of this natural money system, yes, down here in this natural world. For money answereth all things, and it will, except for the health of your physical body, and that I've already taken care of, and I'm going to have my hand heavily upon you in these days and hours as well. For my mighty angels are encamped around you right now. <laughs> All the angels have been given their orders. Headquarters from heaven have already sent them on assignment. They already know exactly what to do. I've already told them the very words that you already are going to speak in the future. Yeah, God, I saw you speak them. I already saw them. Remember, with my great foreknowledge, I've seen all things already. I've seen the times that you were going to speak these things. In fact, I saw it before the foundation of the world when I created all things and I put all things in, into my rest. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And I've already had my son birth those words that you would speak so that they would be legal. They would be blood-bought, blood apportionment words, blood-stained words that would carry the power of my reconciling time of glory into all the hearts of the people. Know this, know this, know this, that I put an uncommon favor upon my children as well. You have great favor between God and all men. And don't shortchange yourself of who you are and what you are in me. For I've made you into a mighty jewel, a mighty power, a mighty old person, especially in these last days and hours. For I've set you apart. Yes, I've set you apart. And I've put a great anointing and a great glory upon you to pierce anything that the powers of darkness would ever do. And the things that are about to happen on the earth, I don't want my people to be troubled by them whatsoever. So they've all been defeated. Every evil report that you see has already been pre-defeated. Pre and when I bring forth my, my government, when I give forth the restoration and restitution of all things in your rightful president and everything else, and the rightful offices that need to be held in the glory of my power and my spirit, everything will come into a rectification, a restoration, and all things will be brought into a seizing into my glory, for you're about to see the restitution of all things, my children, and it'll be a glorious event, a glorious event. You're going to wake up one day and you're going to see it. It's going to happen, and you're going to say, it's like a dream. Are we in a dream? Did this really happen? Yes, 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 it's really happening. And I'm going to restore unto you your fortunes. Yes, all your fortunes, not just financially, but spirit, soul, and body, financially, physically, socially, and economically, and all that you have to do with. For I'm going to bring you into these resources, and you're going to do great things. You're going to publish great materials. Many of you will be even publishing books, and you'll see it. But I'll put an uncommon anointing upon you that you'll have the wisdom of heaven itself, and you'll know that my son's glory and his wisdom, understanding, knowledge, and counsel are flowing through you through the power of the Holy Ghost, which is the wisdom of Almighty God. I want you to receive this word spoken unto you and get yourself prepared for these things are going to start happening in an accelerated mode speedily. Speedily, you're going to see troubled times, yes, against the world system, for I'm about to bring a judgment on them that they've never, never could even see coming. They're going to be blindsided. Yes, the wicked witch. And these governments, oh, everything that connects them to the uncommonness of, of the unrighteousness of Almighty God. I told you that all unrighteousness has been abolished. And those who are tied to that unrighteousness connected to it. Yes, bound by it. When, oh, because they, that unrighteousness has been abolished and death has been abolished, they themselves will be abolished and be thrown 
and overthrown right now, and you're going to see it happening in these next coming months. You will, you will, you will. Yes, right before you, you're going to be seeing the shock and awe of Almighty God in my powerful hand. I want you to be at that settled peace and know me, know me. Not just know about me, but come into a, a deep understanding of knowing me. Get your loved ones, yes, yes, everybody in, in your households born again and filled with the Holy Ghost. For these are the times you must you must have them come into my 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 bosom, yeah, my place of safety, the ark of my covenant, which is my son, and I have these great angels, glorious angels, powerful angels, delivering angels, protective angels all over you, yes, right now, where it is happening, it is starting, and I want my people to be ready. Oh, be seasoned in your heart, be ready, and understand the days and the times and the hours. And the seasons, yes, this is the seasons of the end times, my children. Receive my word and this corresponding word thereafter. Soak in them, soak in them, soak in them oftentimes. And receive this word deeply into your spirit and your soul. And let your body correspond to all these things now. Receive this in Jesus' mighty and matchless name. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Oh, what a glorious word. Receive, receive. Drink it. Drink it deep. Say, that's for me, Father. That's for me, Lord. I take it. I receive it. I accept it. And I walk in the sweet benefits of it. That's for me, Lord. That's for me, Daddy. The Lord's monitoring your hearts right now to see those who want to receive this. Not just those in this Zoom room, but this message is going to go out to the world. And many people outside of this body will hear this word. Yes, <clears throat> yes. And the Lord's monitoring their hearts right now, judging the secrets of the men's hearts and minds. Determine who's going to be in place. Who's going to get the enlargement of the Lord's wealth transfer? Are you a candidate? Say, yes, Lord, that's me. I position myself to receive this, Father. <clears throat> yes, Lord, by his holy blood, and by his glorious name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord forevermore. Praise the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah. <clears throat> okay, hallelujah. Saints, we have to shift gears here from the spirit into the soul so I can teach. But it will be still taught from my spirit, man. Going to the last page that we left off of last week, the last talent of verse, uh, part 13, where we talked about in Hebrews chapter 114, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister unto the heirs of salvation? Are they now all? The key word is all, meaning that they're already here. They're already here. The Lord sent them. And he already sent them. If you heard the prophecy, you understand what I, what the Lord said through me, is that he already told the angels what you're going to say in the future. He already knows the declarations you're about to make. And he's already given them the assignment and the provision to bring it to pass while you're yet speaking. Isn't it a great thing to have an omnipotent father and a God like that? And aren't they sent here to minister unto the heirs? Yeah, remember were those heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ of salvation? Remember what that word salvation means? It's more than being born again. You're an heir of all those things, and the angels have been sent for you to be an heir of not just health, but for your health and your healing. Angels have been sent for your healing. That's part of your salvation that the angels have been earmarked for for you. It's also for your wholeness. God doesn't want anything missing, anything broken in your life. It's for your total peace. Amen. It's for your soundness, soundness in mind, too. So that you're not going to be thrown to the right or the left when you, are, when you see these evil reports that are becoming from the, man, from the world system and, and, they're, and, and what you're seeing from the system here that the Lord is going to be changing, especially in the media. These angels are going to here to bring an anointing to touch your minds so that your minds will be subtle, they'll be at peace, and not be rattled in fear or anxiety or trepidation. So you call upon your angels for that part of your salvation. This is what the Lord's talking about here in Hebrews 1.14. Say, ministering angels, you minister unto my mind the supernatural peace and anointing of Almighty God, so that these evil reports will not touch me, not put fear or anxiety, trepidation, or any type of anxiety in and around me whatsoever. Do it! Okay? Do it. Not just hear it, but be a doer. Amen. Next part of your soteria or your salvation is deliverance. How big is that? Okay, so you're never going to be, you're never going to succumb when you're shopping in a mall. You're not going to get caught up with violence. 
You're not going to be uh, have a go through a drive-by shooting and that bullet crease you. You're not going to be driving down the road and some person's going to cross the center line because they, you know, something happened to them. Okay, they got clotted up or you know whatever stroke or whatever, and they got hurt. Okay, deliverance, deliverance. God will deliver you. You're not going to be driving through an intersection and somebody's going to do you know race through that red light. A T-bone, no, that's not going to happen because you're calling on that salvation. You're calling that's part of your deliverance. Ministering angels, you minister that deliverance unto me. Hour, second by second, minute by minute, hour by hour, day by day, week by week, month by month. This is what we're talking about when you start using your angels. Next word is preservation. You want to be preserved. Okay, and that's part of your protection. But preservation is big. Everything about you is preserved. Your money's preserved. Your bank accounts are preserved. Your food is preserved. Your job is preserved. Your life sustaining force is preserved from every angle possible. Amen. Next one, safety. In this day and hour, are you kidding me? Safety from everything and anything. You know, you know there's a lot of germs out there. And bacteria that aren't friendly to you or viruses. No, you want safety from everything. Protection, safety, and assurance. Amen. Assurance is important too because it gives you the confidence, a well-being in your soul. Your soul needs to be anchored knowing that God has got you in the palm of his hand and that you are you know, taking safety and refuge under the shadow of the Almighty and under his feathers you are protected by him. Amen. You've got supernatural protection all the time. Even in your workplace where an accident is set up to hurt you. you know, my son Pat was telling me about a missing a hose that was not inserted properly and it could have caused a, a great destruction to that machinery. And who knows what else it could have done. Could have went haywire and sprayed into somebody's face or eyes, whatever. He noticed it and brought it to the attention of a co-worker who they fixed it in time. But maybe an angel brought that to Pat's attention too. Thank God for that. But you don't know what the devil has tried to set people up for destruction in. <clears throat> but that's why we're there. We're the salt of the earth, the light of the world, to protect even them. And those angels will there, be there to protect you. These are the things that the angels are sent to provide for you. And many more than these besides. In Hebrews chapter 2 verses 1 through 3, especially in verse 3 it talks about in context how should we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? And I put in paraphrase here because it's in context that comes from the ministry of angels. Angels are sent to give you your full salvation, all of it. And that's the vehicle that the Lord's using. So if, he's, if you're not aware of that and you're not using them, you're leaving on the table all these things and you're living a life of normal. The angels are sent so that you don't live a life of normal, but you live a life of supernormal or supernatural. And if you're living a life of normals because you haven't been using these angels, it's time to make an, an adjustment. Say, I'm going to use them day and night. Amen. Hallelujah. So in other words, we will not, ex uh, we will not escape so great a salvation at the Lord's earmark for us and deliverance if we don't use or we ignore the availability of the ministering angels of our, in our lives. This may be the biggest reason <clears throat> Think about that. This may be the biggest reason why the body of Christ has had failure or unanswered prayers when they've made petitions towards heaven. Because you forgot to you know, use your angels. You know, when the Lord said, I've given you dominion over all the earth, he talked about the, that meant the angels too. That meant over Satan too. And for some reason, Adam didn't use that in the garden. He had a, a fallen angel there and he should have given him the boot. Okay, now through the redemption and restoration, he has put us above the ministering angels and the demonic host again. Okay? So when we don't use them, you know, the Holy Ghost is saying point blank in verse 3 that you have to use the angels. And without using them, we will forfeit much of our salvation and inheritance, all to the enemy's delight. So it's incumbent for us to use them time and time again for almost everything that we do in this life. They are just standing there waiting on the words of a believer to send them in, on an assignment. Just like I told you about that restaurant example last week about the waitress or waitor 
taking your order. And a father guy would be the cook. They're just waiting for you to give them what it is that you want them to bring you for as far as the food goes. Exactly the same way they're waiting on your orders. So they can go to, you know, to the menu of heaven of all your inheritance, bring it to the father and say, this is what your child wants. The father says, okay, here's the anointing and the provision for it. He anoints that angel to bring it back to you. And then you have the exact provision of that declaration of whatever it is that you said that you wanted or needed. And it's that simple. I mean, we can't look at it in any other, you know, way. Hallelujah. Okay. So we need to understand that that's the way things are run in heaven. And then remember, that will be done in the earth as it is in heaven. Hallelujah. So they are waiting on your orders and commands. And when we do so, your great, great marvels, breakthroughs, signs and wonders, and miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost await us. And that says in Hebrews 2, 4. That's when the signs and wonders happen. You know, if you've ever gone to a miracle crusade, an event, it's loaded with angels in there. They're flying all over people. They're waiting on the you know prayers of the saints that the Holy Ghost hears, and then the Holy Ghost says, go over to that person, hold over the top of them, anoint them, touch their head, touch their arm, touch their physical body, touch an organ in their physical body that they need physical healing for. That's what goes on. Now, when you pray in tongues and pray in the Spirit, that happens automatically, okay, because he knows what you need. Let's put them to work and not stop using them for everything all the days of our life. Hallelujah, praise the Lord forevermore. Okay, now let's get into the next summary sheet that I had sent a couple of weeks ago. It's called More on Your Angels. I don't know if you can see it. If not, it says More on Your Angels, Part 2. And follow along with me because we're going to get into some heavy things here. Hang on to your seats. Here we go. Angels from heaven and devils and demons of hell all have one thing in common to both of them. Did you hear me? They all have one thing in common to both of them. Here it is. Both realms hang on to every word that a human being speaks out of their mouth all day long. Both realms are set up to do that. Amen? I cannot emphasize the importance of that statement. Both realms are listening carefully and diligently to your words. You may say, why? Who am I? You're a king. <laughs> Amen. Unto God Almighty, through Christ. Both realms are hanging on to every word you speak. The angels of Almighty God are assigned to operate on the words spoken by believers that are the words of God. The devil and his crew operate on all the other words that people and believers speak all day long that are not the words of God. Well, what do you mean i got to speak out of the Bible all day long? No. What you do is you emphasize and you couch and you insert the word of God into the declarations that you need and have. Like you get in a car. Say, Lord, I thank you as I drive to work. I'm going to say the 91st Psalm and that thy holy angels are encampeth around me and protect me. I will not have an accident and neither will the unrighteous. See, you're using your, the, the angels all day long. They immediately go into assignment when you say the word of God. You're at work, you're doing the mundane things at work. Say, Lord, I have uncommon uh, wisdom, favor, supernatural strength, endurance, focus, concentration, and ambition. And angels are anointed to give you that. So then all day long things happen to you great with great speed. Speedily you, find, you have wisdom to find this or to find that. And you have the stanima, and you've got the favor of Almighty God that no matter where you go, or no matter who you touch or turn to, you always find the necessity of what you need to have happen with God's favor on you. So you insert all day long the Word of God. Father, I'm about to speak to this client, or speak to this person, or speak to that patient over here. And I think that the wisdom of God will flow through me. It'll flow from me. And, I, and when I open my mouth, strangers shall submit themselves before me. They shall obey all my words. See how you can use the word of God all day long? I'm not saying you go up to the person and you start quoting the scripture. I'm saying you've already prepared yourself just before you meet them. Amen. Hallelujah. So, the angels of God are assigned to minister unto you as you speak forth the word of God and the devil and all of his cohorts. And his crew are assigned to listen to all the other words that you speak that are not of the words of God. Both realms are on assignment. 
from their perspective headquarters, God, who are heavenly angels, that headquarters, and Satan and his headquarters in hell, they've given them both one specific assignment. Here it is. Are you ready? Better write this down. Hear what they're saying, obey what they're saying, and implement their words. Hear, obey, and implement their words. Both sides have that same order from headquarters given to the angelic realm of heaven and to the demonic realm from hell. Hear, obey, and implement their words. One time Kenneth Copeland or somebody else had a vision. And he saw these angels standing uh, next to people waiting on their words, but then he noticed, the Lord goes, notice what Satan's doing in his cohorts. They had what would be a sign, what you would see a, in a court setting. If you've ever been in a courtroom, there's a stenographer that's sitting there and are, you know, typing every word that is spoken by the judge, the prosecutor, the defendant, you know, the lawyers on both sides, okay, the, you know, the defense lawyers and all that. They write down everything. And he noticed that these stenographers were writing down every word that the believers or even the worldly people were speaking. And as they were, you know, as he was doing this for a while, um, he would then give all these words to another demon and they would take him to hell. And then another set of demons came up with those words and they started attacking these people with the negative words that they were saying because remember now you're a king and where the word of a king is it has to be obeyed because you're the boss here so they got your proof they got your words they got your declarations they got your orders to destroy you and you wonder why god's allowing that it's because you're the one who's in authority here god gave it to you in turn and walked away he's not an indian giver oh i'm going to give you the authority and then i'm going to take it back when you fail no you got it so realize that you got it and then act upon it, okay? We're going to get into that in a little bit, more, you know, a little deeper in a moment here. So they hear, obey, and implement all their words. Now, if you think that this is a joke, that's why you've been living a life of mediocrity. And when I say mediocrity, I'm talking about anything less than being a gigantic Superman where we're able to do all things at any time we want and the sign is a wonder realm, you, the, the devil's been squatting on your Superman status. Believe me, for the longest time since the fall of Adam and Eve, the enemy has had his way with man almost exclusively. Since man was in a fallen state and owned by Satan, in fact, you know, possessed by him, he could do whatever he wanted to man. A few exceptions were the moves that God did in the Old Testament through the, his prophets, when the Holy Ghost would land on a couple of people who were washed through a sacrificial you know, blood offering of a lamb. The enemy had it made up until the time of the cross of Jesus, of Jesus Christ. When the church, at that time when the church was reborn through Jesus' DBR, death, burial, and resurrection, man was changed back into God's image and likeness again, okay, to those who received Jesus as Lord. The tables were turned, amen, they were potentially turned back in our favor. Why do I say potentially? Are you going to get off the dime and do it? Are you going to get the knowledge to find out really what happened? Okay, let's read on. This is big, what I'm about to say here. The next couple of paragraphs. <clears throat> Hallelujah. When Jesus went to hell and paid our penalty as an innocent being, he took the crown off of Satan's head and gave that dominion back to mankind. Amen. The devil knew that redeemed man, born again man, was his boss again. And he was king of the earth underneath Christ. Now Matthew 28, 18, I told you to turn there. Let's look at it real quickly. Jesus has, was saying this before he was ascended into heaven. He said, all power, and that word power there means authority as well. Authority slash power. Exousia, that's the Greek word there. All authority slash power in heaven and in earth, okay, has been given unto me in heaven and in the earth. Now, he already had it. You know, you got to get this one thing down every time you read something about Jesus. He didn't do it for himself. Well, in a way he did because he wanted you back and you're part of himself. But he really didn't do anything because he already had it. He wasn't tainted by sin. I know he became our sin, but he never sinned. But Jesus did everything for you and for me. Everything he did was for you and for me. So when he utters these words, all authority or power 
is given unto me in heaven and earth. When he's saying given unto me, he's talking about you. Because you, you and me are him. We're the me he's talking about there. Because Jesus already had all power and authority in heaven and on earth. Okay, he never lost it. Okay, then he goes on to say, so, therefore, so go ye therefore, since you've got this authority back, go ye therefore. Do whatever I told you to do. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you receive this power, anointing and ability from me, so freely give it out. It's free. Okay? Go ahead and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the earth. All the things that Jesus commanded his disciples to do. And I just told you, heal the sick, cast out devils, and on and on we go. Well, you, you can't do that unless you've got the authority and you've got the power. And the key word in there is all. All power has been given unto me. And Jesus turned right around and gave it right back unto you. All, all, all means all. Now you may say, that's fantastic. Yeah, so long as you recognize and remember who you are. But that can be turned against you if you don't know what, what's going on. Let's read on and find out. <clears throat> and don't forget, whatever Jesus gets, you get. Romans 8, 17. Remember, we're an heir of God and joint heir with Jesus. So we're a joint heir to where he said, all power has been given unto me both in heaven and in earth. You're a joint heir to that. Whatever Jesus gets, you and I get. Isn't that good? Let that soak in for a moment. Okay. <clears throat> the devil knew that redeemed man's words were full of dominion, authority, and power. He knew that. Jesus told him that. He told him in Revelation, uh, book of Revelation 1, 17 and 18. Now listen to this. Where the word of a king is, there is power. That's Ecclesiastes 8, 4. Where the word of a king is, there is power. Kings have power. If you don't believe it, back in the 16th century, you didn't follow them off with your head. Revelation 1, 5, and 6 says that he's crowned us and made us kings and priests unto himself. Revelation 19, 16 says that we're king of kings and lord of lords. King of kings, lord of lords, all capitalized. Talking about Jesus being the head, we're the body. And we're the lords of this earth again. It meant doom to the enemy and his cohorts. For the devil knew that man's words were final authority once again on the earth. It meant doom. Let's listen, watch what happened here. The enemy, though, continued observing man's behavior and words after he was saved. <clears throat> and notice that they were still speaking as though they were never saved and acted as slaves. They continued to act like slaves. They never got their minds renewed to the word. He noticed that carnal Christians who did not renew their minds to the word of God <clears throat> had no idea what Jesus did for them in his death, burial, and resurrection. They were clueless. And he loved it. Although saved, they were acting as though nothing new had happened. Okay, did you ever see that bumper sticker? I'm a redeemed sinner, but I'm still a sinner? They're acting like nothing ever happened. That guy still needs to get born again. Okay? The enemy must have had a gigantic meeting in hell with all of his minions. He told them, although man was king and had authority over them all, they did not seem to know it. Those beings, these beings have little or no idea what Jesus did for them. This is what Satan said to these people. As long as we can keep the word of God away from them, okay, they will never go back to finding out what they became and how they became kings and lords. Think about that one. As long as we can keep the word of God away from them so that they cannot find out what they, what they became, and that they had become the lords of this earth again, we can go back and trick them into saying wrong words that will empower our side and neutralize God's angels. This is how Satan was thinking. This is how crazy this guy is. Okay? This is important. This is why renewing our minds to God's word for us is of the utmost importance in life. 
The devil strategized to remove the Bible out of man's hands by religion and setting up church denominations that would only allow the so-called priest or the religious hierarchy of that order to read the word to the people, but not allowing the people to have the word personally for themselves to look into. This worked perfectly for almost 2,000 years. <clears throat> Finally, the Spirit of God broke through in the early 1900s and beyond, and the Bible found its way back into man's hands again, and the people started to wake up and to be set free, John 8, 32. My word will set you free. Amen? Everybody knows that, That's that verse. My word is truth, and the word will set you free. And it did. So now the stage was set. Believers are empowered to dominate the earth, the devil, and his crowd. The devil told his minions to obey, redeem man to the letter, and to bring catastrophe to his life if he, is, if he speaks wrong or evil or negative words. He said, obey the words of the Lord. God, Jesus said, we have to obey our, this man now. He's got the dominion back. But if we can trick him into saying and use his dominion, his anointing, his authority wrongly, we've got the receipt in our hand. Just like a UPS driver and you sign the receipt, he's got the receipt that you authorize the reception of that package. Okay? Angels from heaven only move for you when you speak the word of God. Demons from hell obey you when you speak words that are contrary to the word of God. These two realms are standing at attention to hear your words all day long. Heaven for you and hell against you. You are the wild card in this mix. Think about that. You're the wild card. you got these two gigantic angelic realms on both sides. Heaven on your right hand, the demonic realm on your left. And here you are floating through life either acting responsibility or acting irresponsible and clueless like a imbecile little child just floating you know flying the words out of your mouth and hell's jumping on all over them remember this stenographer <clears throat> okay now listen carefully here you're the wild card in this mix your words are the drawbridge to allow one side or the other to cross over into your life to help you or to destroy you. I'm going to say that one more time so you grab a hold of it. Your words are the drawbridge. Now what do I mean by drawbridge? Picture in your mind 16th century a big castle. Around this castle is a moat, a big trench with water in it and they had alligators or crocodiles in there. So anybody trying to get over into the king, unless they were a great pole vaulter and they could climb the side like Spider-Man, they were going to fall into that moat and uh, alligators or crocodiles were going to eat them alive and kill them. Now, the only way you can get across that moat was a big gigantic drawbridge they would lay over until it would hit land on the other side and you could safely pass over without falling into the moat and falling into the alligators or crocodiles and be eaten. Now, once, you, once this drawbridge came into that land, you could then pass safely over into that land, or those who were over on that other side could pass safely from their land over the drawbridge into the castle. Well, you're the castle. Okay? And your tongue is the drawbridge that you roll down, and then the words that spin off of your tongue allow either Satan to cross over on his land, over into your life, into your affairs, inside of your castle, your body, or you allow the angels of God to cross over that drawbridge into your life, into your body. And you're the one who authorized either side. Isn't that something? It was you who did it, remember? I just said, you're the wild card in this mix. You've got the angels on one side and you've got the demonic host on the other, and your tongue is the drawbridge that let down the bridge over the moat onto the other land. Now that land has both the demonic and the angelic host ready to cross over. And they'll either bless you from heaven or destroy you from hell. And a lot of people blame God. Lord, why did you let this happen? Why did that person get cancer? Why did that person die over here? How come this one got in an accident? It can all be brought back. They'll go to that stenographer. He'll be there. Let's see you over here. See, on that day you said, you know, this negative thing. Over here you're going to say, oh, well, I'm, you know, the... People are driving crazy, and one of these days they're going to, you know, get me too, or I'm going to die. 
They took all those words and gave them to the demonic host to kill you. You don't think it's true? It is true. Death and life are in the power of your words, your tongue. Okay? That drawbridge is happening all day long. And God's sitting there saying, I gave you the dominion. I expected you to have renewed your mind to your inheritance. You know, you've got this magnificent Bible in front of you that tells you what you can do, how you can do it. I've given you marvelous pastors and evangelists and teachers, like Pastor Pat, okay, and others, okay, to give you the insight to keep yourself protected and how to destroy the powers of darkness and advance the purposes of the kingdom of God here on the earth. Let's go forward here. So your words are the drawbridge to allow one side or the other to cross over into your life to help you or destroy you. Angels from heaven will not move if you say destructive words and they will just stand there and watch you get wrecked. Now this really happened. I can't remember it was Caps or one other minister. They actually saw a situation where a little child jumped off the curb and got hit by a bus and got killed. And it bothered, you know, this minister. I don't know if it was Charles or not. I can't remember for sure. But he said, Lord, why don't you just have an angel pull him back? He goes, his parents, although they're carnal Christians, they never did the 91st Psalm over their children. They never pleaded the blood of Jesus over their children. So he had nothing to work with. He had no orders. But many a times did the mother say, you know, when you cross that street, if you don't watch where you're going, you're going to get hit by a bus or by a car, and you're going to get yourself killed. They had plenty of her words, though, and the devil had all those words. So when the opportunity presented itself, they took advantage of it and chilled their child. And she got beat at the game of life, and had no idea, blamed God, got bitter towards God, framed God, and God's there, did you want me to go crosswise to my word where I destroy myself, where I said that you have the dominion and not me? Did you want me to interfere in your life? Well, Lord, you could have extended some mercy. That's possible. But how long did this go on till that event was set up? <clears throat> then he saw another event where these people, they lived where they had to cross over these railroad tracks back and forth all their life. And their parents preached to the kids, be very careful. And they did from a toddler up, you know, always look, which way you're going and if you don't you're going to get hit by a car or by the train and it's going to kill you and they kept you know saying this even when they got to uh, teenagers well one day um they're driving a car god forbid the car stalled on the tracks the train hit them and the children died and if you could go back and the lord showed how many times the parents said one of these days if you don't obey what i'm saying the train's going to kill you. It'll probably get stalled on the tracks and you'll die. The devil had that stenographer. He said, here's how many times he said it. They finally set up. It took, it took many years to get to that setup. And he finally took them out. You go, well, that's ridiculous. Okay, they're dead. They're in a grave. Okay, Boot Hill swallowed them up. But they had no idea what was going on. Are you trying to tell me if you don't do the 91st Psalm uh, and you pray over yourself, uh, you'll probably get in a car wreck and you could possibly die? Yeah. Well, what about the people who go through a whole lifetime? They never said it, and they never got hit. P pure happenstance. But the devil got them set up on another crippler, believe me, somewhere. We just don't know where yet. Okay? Let's keep going here. <clears throat> heaven, angels from heaven will not move if you say destructive words. They'll just stand there and watch you get wrecked. They are emotionless beings, almost like automaton type robots. A little bit more than that. They have some emotion, but they're not total robots, okay? But they will not do anything unless you give them orders. The devil cannot do anything if you speak God's word. He just stands there. The devil just stands there and watches you get blessed. It works the other way too, you know, okay? Remember Psalm 23, 5? That the Lord has prepared a table before you in the very presence of your enemy. And on this table is the righteousness of God, the fruits of God, the health and healing of Almighty God, the provision of Almighty God. And the devil's got to sit, sit there and watch you and stand there, eat uh, the abundance of all God's blessing. And he can't touch you. 
because that person knew what their rights were. They stayed in their covenant promises, and they confessed the good word of God over their lives every day. Okay? And how about Psalm 91 that we do at the end of our service every day, and that you should be doing before you leave your house in the morning? That they shall bear us up in their hands, lest we dash you know, our foot against a stone? That no evil or plague shall come nigh our dwelling? All that? The whole psalm is excellent? When you say that, you send forth your angels. The angels of God are not over on assignment to protect you. And most of the time, just like you have involuntary breathing apparatus going on and your heart's beating and you're not conscious of it, these angels are protecting you in an unconscious time when you don't know that you're being protected. A germ just passed you over you and missed you, but the angel pushed it away. That was an earmark for you. Or a stray bullet. He had your car stop, so it would go right before you, then you go forward again. Or had you arrested at an intersection and a car go barreling through a red light where it was an earmark to destroy you because you did the 91st Psalm and you put your angels on assignment. Okay? You have enormous power and authority here in the earth. Your angels from heaven are tremendously strong and can do great exploits for you. You must be disciplined in life in order to get this benefit, however. Your dominion is so strong, listen carefully to this, your dominion is so strong that God himself will not interfere with your words. God himself won't interfere with your words. That shows you how powerful your dominion really is. But with this dominion comes great responsibility to use it aright. Did you hear me? Just about ready to unhook here. The enemy fears a believer who has woken up to the rightful dominion and authority and will only speak what they desire to come to pass in life. Don't say, well, pastor, this is really too difficult. No, it's not. Just only speak what you desire to come to pass in life. Good things. Well, we're always blessed. If they get sick, it doesn't matter. God bless them, but my family is always blessed and we're never going to get sick in our household. Was that so hard to speak your desire? Just speak only the things that you desire to come to pass. Amen? Only speak those things. That, that's not hard. You know, we used to do a prayer exercise here, a declaration exercise. If I would say something stupid, my wife would say to me, do you want me to get in agreement with that according to Matthew 18, 18 and 18, 19? I go, no. Then she goes, you better put those words in the blood. And I did. Or if, I, or if she said something negative, I said, do you want me to get in agreement with that? Where we would empower the devil to surely destroy you? She goes, sure, certainly not. Put those words in the blood. She did. Well, those words are already in the blood. This is before we knew that we're in a waterfall. But it's not bad to say that. I thank you, Lord, that I'm constantly under the waterfall of the blood. And you've neutralized those words now. Okay? Let's go on. Speak only what you desire to come to pass. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, Proverbs 18.21 says. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. <clears throat> now, the second part of that verse is more powerful than the front part. Well, how could it be more powerful? What could be more powerful than death and life are in the power of the tongue? Now, notice what it said. Who's got the tongue? You do. Who's got the power of death? The devil does. No, you do. Who's got the power of life? You do, you got the tongue. Oh, God's got the power of life. He gave you life, but now your job is to be a steward over your life and protect it and keep it. What long life will I satisfy him? And continually show him my continued salvation. The last verse in Psalm 91, I believe it's 91.16. Now listen to me. Death and life are in your power, in the power of your mouth. Not God, not the devil, but you're going to empower either side to help and bless you or take you out. That's the difference. Now the second part of that verse says, and they that love it, love what? The words that they are saying of death, if you love those words of death, they that love it show what? Eat the fruit thereof. See, words sow seeds that sow a harvest of fruit. So if you're sowing a fruit of death, you're going to harvest. You're going to, you're going to eat the fruit of that harvest of death. But if you're sowing life and constantly sowing life of the seed of life, 
that's going to produce a harvest, a cluster of grapes or harvests in your life, and you're going to eat that fruit of life all the time. See, everything goes back to the law of sowing and reaping. Remember that? Okay? But notice that. It's all in your hands. Let's wrap this thing up here. If we speak death, the enemy will pounce on those words and bring havoc into your life. But if we, and also if we speak sickness, sickness will ha he will bring, and he has your words as legal authority and permission to do it. If you say negative things about your finances, job, or business, he will suffocate your money flow into your life at every source. Conversely, our angels will pounce on good words from your mouth. When you speak health and, and you speak God's word about it, they will anoint you and bring health and healing into your life. When you speak blessings over your finances, they will bring abundance of wealth into your life. When you speak blessings over your life and your family's lives, they will be blessed, protected, prosper, and favored in everything that they do. If you say my kids are shot and they will not amount to anything, the devil will take those words and make sure that they are destroyed in life and become bums. But if you say my children are taught, they are blessed of the Lord, and everything they touch in life prospers, and they are greatly blessed, highly favored, and deeply loved, God and his angels will make sure that they are. Finally, the key is don't be double-minded in your statements. It says it in James chapter 1, a double-minded man is unstable in all, in all of his doings, and God can't bless that person because you're not saying it long enough so, for the angel to bring it to pass. Don't bless your words one with you know your words one minute and then curse your life ten minutes later and bring confusion to your angels. Ecclesiastes five six. Look that up. I don't have time to go there, but it says that you frustrate your angels. You're going to bring anger to God because they're, they're they're working on an assignment to bless you ex, you know extensively. And then two minutes later you're saying the opposite and then you arrest them and the devil pounces on you. God doesn't like it. Be consistent. Okay. Stay consistent, never deviating from your declarations of good things. You are a king now. Act the part of a king. Act the part of a son and daughter of God. When you speak the word of God, know that all of God's words have already come to pass in, in the earth. So speak these, these precious words of God that have already come to pass in the earth for you and win and win and win some more. Praise God. Hallelujah. Forevermore. Let's unhook there. Hallelujah. Next week we'll start with the Holy Ghost healing. But don't forget to look up that Ecclesiastes verse. I'll give it to you one more time. Okay, it's Ecclesiastes chapter 5. I believe it's verse 6. Yep. You're gonna, you know, the angels can get aggravated. I thought you said there were automatons and emotionless. Well, just don't frustrate situations. You know how long it may take an angel to bring a certain a group of people to prosper you because it says that God generally uses people to bring prosperity to the hands of the body of Christ so he may have had to land on you know 10,000 people to get you the financial prayer that you needed or the amount then two minutes later you go I guess it's not working God wants me broke all that work it might have taken those angels a month to do all that you just threw it all out the window by saying that word you canceled it that's a cancel culture that you don't want to be involved with, believe me. <laughs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> Alrighty. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this message. We thank you for the revelation of it. We thank you, Lord God, for the seasoning of the Holy Ghost and birth it into our spirit, souls, and body so that we are hearers and active doers of it. My prayer of the saints is that they hear this message over and over and please over and over and go over the summary sheets over and over and over. So you get this down as second nature, so you're not even thinking about it anymore that you have to do it. You're going to catch yourself saying wrong words and go, oh, I thank you that the waterfall of the blood of Jesus is cleansing me of all sin and unrighteousness. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you for convicting me of my righteousness, Holy Spirit, that I am the righteousness of God. I don't need to say that. I don't need to lend my authority, to lend my tongue, to lend my kingship to an outlaw of defeated spirit. I'm going to lend my words to my holy Jesus, to my precious Holy Spirit, to my precious Holy Father, and my precious holy angels, so we can get the work of the ministry down here on the earth. So Father, that is my prayer, that they soak in this thing day and night, and they get it down, and they use their angels day and night. Hallelujah. Saints, 
get your communion ready. Okay, we're going to come into union <coughs> with God through the elements, your wafer and your juice. And also get your um, offering ready so we can lay hands on it here. And also you lay hands on it there. And if any two on earth shall agree, Matthew 18, 18 and 19 says, it's touching any one thing that they ask on this earth, our Father in heaven shall bring it to pass. Hallelujah. <coughs> it's a marvelous word today, saints. <coughs> that prophecy too, that prophecy, it's a holy thing. It's a holy thing, saints. It's a holy thing. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. God is good. God is good. God is good. Amen. All right, so take you take the bread and say this with me, Father, in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord God, that we are the body of Christ. We've come into union to what Jesus said at that last supper where he said, Do this in remembrance of me. Remember what my finished work was all about, he's saying. Remember my death beyond resurrection for you. Remember how we came into union together. We're now on bone of your bone, flesh of your flesh, and your bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, that I nourish and cherish your flesh. You know, the Lord showed me something the other day, and I've been practicing it, and I do these things before I say them to, to, to prove them out. Now, this is something new that I've done to help healing in your physical body. I take both my hands, which are the remember, I'm the body of Christ. So whose hands are these really? The hands of Jesus, right? Think about that. So I laid, I've laid. i been laying my hands on my head, on my hair, and to go throughout my whole body, these are the hands of the Father. Well, where are you getting that from? I thought you said Jesus. Because the Bible says in Ephesians 4.4, 4, there's only one God, one Father, one body. So when I lay hands on my head, it's the Father's hands. When I lay hands on my head and hair, it's the Lord Jesus' hands. When I lay hands on my head, it's also who? The Holy Ghost involved. And angels who will minister into my physical body, starting with the top of my head down, right? Amen? You get that? And I've actually been doing that before I go into the shower so my hair doesn't fall out. Okay? One or two strands. From, that's it. And I say, Lord, and I, I call the Lord on the carpet. I go, that's, I'm holding the, I'm holding the Father's hair. Lord, Father, did you hear? This is your hair. Lord Jesus, this is your hair. This is your strand. Isn't it, Father? Isn't it? And you know that that's got to stir up heaven a little bit, right? So I've been doing it to where now. Finio, done, dead. It's not going to happen anymore. And do that for every part of your physical body. So now you got the Father laying his hands on you. You got the Son of God laying his hands on you. You got the Holy Ghost laying his hands on you. You are using the hands of Jesus laying hands on you. And you got your own angels laying hands on you as well. Start doing that. And I'm telling you, you're going to start seeing some great vibrancy going on inside of you. You're actually going to feel it. Amen. You got to talk to God like he's in a room with you. Okay? Don't be intimidated if something derogatory happens. Don't be ashamed to say, wait a minute. Oh, here's one strand, Lord. This is your hair. Say it to him. He loves it. You're bringing it up. And he will not be a debtor to his word. Okay? Or anything else on your physical body. Okay? Say, Lord, that's your organ. That's your heart. That's your ear. That's your eyes. Same thing. Do it for every part of your body. So when we take this communion, that's what Jesus is saying. He goes, well, do this in remembrance of what I did for you. I'm the one. The Bible says, lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Whose hands? The church's hands. Well, the church happens to be one with the Father, the Lord Jesus, and the Holy Ghost. Where do you get the Holy Ghost from? Acts 10.38, how God anointed the three parts of the Godhead. God anointed, God the Father anointed Jesus of Nazareth, the Son, with the Holy Ghost, the third part of the Trinity, and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. This is part of the remembrance of the communion. I'm coming to union with what he said for me to remember and to do. So we're healed. Amen? For those of you who know people who need physical healing, maybe yourself or others, send them this video. 
send it to him. You may not have the strength or the fortitude or the gumption yet or the knowledge to, to preach like I can or talk like I can. You will shortly because God told me that you know, we're gonna, he's going to do a quick work on us. Okay, But send him the video. Okay, People I know that have people who are sick are sending my videos out to them and we're getting results. Amen? So take this. This is you. Bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh. He nourishes and cherishes his own body, his own you know, eyes, his own hair, his own ears, his own heart, his blood pressure. It's his, his skin, his flesh of his flesh, all of his bones. That's us. That's the power of taking real communion. Now, if you believe that you are healed as he is today, and you are, because the Bible says as he is now, so are we in this world. We have his genetic salvation. That means our genes are now his. Well, my inheritance says that from my genealogy trail, I'm going to come down with this. Shut your mouth. Put those words in the blood. How dare you just give the devil permission to destroy you? That's not the real you. The minute you got born again, the blood of Christ is now flowing through you. And you start saying this. You start saying, I have Jesus' genetic salvation and my physical body into my mind, my soul, my brain as well. His genetics, his genes, his DNA. You died. The Bible says God now has given you his spirit and his body. You want a perfect... I got other verses that we haven't covered yet. Okay, he says that. And he means that. You are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body, which in your spirit and in your body, which are God's. If you believe that, our youth is renewed like the eagles and the Lord Jesus Christ, and our body parts not grow old or run out, you may partake of the bread. I do, you do. Amen. Okay, just for your scripture reference, 1 Corinthians 6, 20, which don't, by you know, verse 19 is the one too, don't you know that your body is now that of the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, and that you are, look at this wording, which you have of God, and you are not your own anymore, because you're saved? For you have been bought with a price, the precious blood of Jesus, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Your spirit is God's, and your body is now God. It lines up with Ephesians 4, 4, and what we just said. Hallelujah. Now take this cup. And this cup is symbolically the shed blood of Christ that is before the mercy seat of Almighty God as an everlasting reminder that the plan of redemption work, and that this waterfall of the blood continually keeps us in a state of innocence, righteousness, and sinlessness, before our Heavenly Father through the Lord Jesus Christ. We stand inside the Son of the Living God and the Beloved as the perfect Beloved before God Almighty as a precious jewel, blameless, unre you know, holy, unblameable, unreprovable in His sight. And His precious blood continually trounces over the devil. And by the words of our testimony, we say so. Amen? Amen. We overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimony, testifying personally to what the Word says that the blood did for us, and that's what we're saying now. This blood is also an apportionment of it been shed inside of your heart. You got saved. God shed his blood over your spirit, man. It's still there. Never left. It's inside the basin. So when you speak faith-filled words out of your mouth, writing on those words is some of that blood. And the blood never fails. If you believe that, you may partake of the precious blood of Christ by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Now that cup is symbolically the blood, but by faith we're taking it, partaking of the precious blood. Amen. Jesus said, as long as you drink of this cup of my blood and eat of my flesh, the enemy will not be able to bring forth death into your members.
Okay, we're going to do the offering right now, and also get your Bibles ready for Psalm 91. Uh, also, if you have a pen out there, you may want to write this verse down and never forget it. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 19. Ecclesiastes 10, 19. Next time you think that God poo-poos money, or doesn't think that it's an important thing, <clears throat> it says in his verse that money answereth all things. Well, what about your health? I already t gave you that you know caveat before. But as far as things that need to be done here on this planet, it answers all. So don't think you're being humble by being broke. To the devil's delight, he loves people that think that way. Jesus paid an enormous price to bring you into millionaire, billionaire, and trillionaire status. Let's pray. Money answereth all. You got the money. Sit, you know, most people will sit down because you got the wherewithal to bring things to pass. <coughs> Father, we thank you for, the, for bringing this basket of our tithes and offerings before you in the name of thy holy child, Jesus. And we bring it to the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the apostle and high priest over our words, and after the order of Melchizedek, who is the receiver and the anointer of the tithe and offerings. <coughs> we thank you, Lord, that as you take this basket from my hands, we declare that we receive a thoughtful blessing and a thoughtful return of this giving today. We thank you that the silver, gold, and cattle of a thousand hills are ours because the Genesis 126 says so. And you redeemed us back into that. Amen. We thank you, Lord God, that the wealth of the wicked has been exchanged for us to just now. The scripture says it in the book of Proverbs that it's ours. So it is ours. All the wicked rich, thank you. We're storing it all up for me now, and God's going to dump it all on us. I have it now. I believe it. I receive it, and I walk in it. And we thank you, Lord God, that any debt that we have, may have incurred, whether it be mortgage, credit card, school debt, college debt, or any other debt known or unknown, we immediately cancel it by the power of the blood. The angels of God, who are debt neutralizers and cancelers, are set into motion. And we just thank you, Lord God, that we are debt-free through the power of the anointing of God's jubilee in Christ Jesus. Jubilee means debt cancellation. We thank you that the angels of Almighty God go out from the north, east, south, and west to bring in, in finances and revenue and, and, and money to us from expected and unexpected sources, especially in these last hours of time. And we thank you, Lord God, that we do walk in the fullness of the abundance of all that was earmarked and destined for us from the foundation of the world. So money, you come to us today, next day, and all the days of our life. Receive this glory, receive this wealth, receive this anointing to receive the blessings of Almighty God by the power of His grace and righteousness. You have it now in Jesus' name. Amen. And I thank you, Father, for it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. <coughs> now, hallelujah. We'll do the 91st time, and Tony's going to turn there. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Amen. All right, now, just for you who want to know where the wealth transfers in the book of Proverbs, it says here in Proverbs 13, 22, A righteous man or a good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the wicked... The wealth of the sinner has been laid up for the just. That's you and me. That's Proverbs 13, 22. That's for you. And for me, especially in these last days. <clears throat> Hallelujah. There you go, Tom. All right. 91st Psalm, Saints. Ready? We who dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall lodge, abide, and stay under the shadow of the Almighty God. We will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, and my God in Him do we trust. Surely He has delivered us from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. He's covered us with His feathers, and under His wings shall we trust. His truth is our shield and buckler. We shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, 
nor for destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at our side, and ten thousand at our right hand, but it shall not come nigh, because of our angels. All with our eyes should we behold and see the reward of the wicked, because he's made the Lord, which is our refuge, even the Most High, as our habitation. There shall no evil befall you, neither shall any plague come nigh your dwelling. For he has given his mighty angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways, all. They shall bear us up in their hands, lest we dash our foot against the stone. We shall tread upon the lion, the adder, young lion and dragon, shall we trample under feet, treading upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt us. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore have I delivered him. I have set him on high, because he has known my name. He has called upon me, and I have answered him. I am with him in trouble. I have delivered him and honored him. With long life do I satisfy them, and show them my continued, ongoing, everlasting, perpetual, and eternal salvation, which is our Jesus. It's our health, healing, wholeness, soundness, deliverance, preservation, safety and assurance, wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Hallelujah, saints. Hallelujah. Let's do a closing prayer together. Father, I speak this prayer over the saints for their week as they travel a lot of you do a lot of traveling right Marty? <laughs> they do a lot of traveling during their week We're going back and forth to work and what have you you know you can walk to this corner store and you still need your angels amen we pray supernatural protection upon them over our cars whether we walk or drive the holy angels are above beneath and front behind the sides of the car as well as the holy blood of Christ in the hand of Almighty God. Amen. Above, beneath, and front, behind the sides. And not only us, Lord, but the unrighteous as well, for the heathen have been given unto us as our inheritance. But we pray, Lord God, that nobody, nobody who caused an accident to be formed into us, righteous or otherwise, we are divinely protected on the road. You keep the other people alert. Thank God for that. And Father, that we've got the great favor of Almighty God upon us all week long. And that we remember this, the teaching of this word and this message. That we use the angels of Almighty God for everything and incorporate that wording into everything that we do in life. Even in our workplace, especially there. To make the tasks that we do during the work day easier. Amen. And we thank you, Lord God, that we use these angels constantly for they're part of our salvation. And my prayer, again, Lord, and it'll be that prayer between now and time of the rapture, that the saints go over the message. On the way to work, they hear her half, and on the way home, they hear the other half. To become so saturated inside them that they know it's real, and that it was for them your love letter and gesture to them, Father. We thank you, Father, for all this. We thank you for their victory this week. And Lord, we'll not be swayed by the news, but we will make the news ourselves by the power of our signs, wonders, and glory that you've given unto us, by and through the blood of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for all this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a glorious service this was, saints. I, I trust that it ministered unto you and it blessed you richly and exceedingly. I also thank you that for being a partaker of our service today at Spirit Word Ministries. We count it a privilege and honor to have you not only grace us with your presence, but also your prayers, your support, your finances, and all that you do. We wouldn't be here without any of that, but we will be here because of your faithfulness and your love towards us, and we thank the Lord that he's given you to us, and we love you dearly. Lastly, as we close, any prayer requests you may have, you may call, text, email, however, and we'll be here to help you in any which way we possibly can. I know we've got a poet out there, but there's some rhymes that we'll come up with. I was telling my wife one yesterday. You want a faster answer? Call the faster pastor. <laughs> Amen. And we're going to get that to you as, as quickly as we can. Thank you, Lord, for the saints. We love them. Thank you dearly, Lord God, for their presence. Until we meet again next week, may God's richest and heavy hand of blessing be upon you and his great favor in Jesus' mighty and matchless and holy name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. <laughs>